I became a university professor at Princeton and at Vanderbilt University, and it was a very unlikely place for someone like me to land because I started life as one of 12 children born and raised in rural poverty. Uh, my parents were not college educated. In fact, my mother and my um, father divorced. I had a stepfather, very abusive relationships, lots of alcohol. We all dropped out of school after completing the eighth grade. For some reason, we only reached the eighth grade. I married at age, at age 16, had my first child at 17, and by the time I was 20, 21, I had three small children. And there were people that came into my life that um, spoke words that changed my life. One was a medical doctor, and during that part of my life, I was a person that was very depressed. I would take bottles of pills. I would do suicide gestures. And this medical doctor told me that I was intelligent, I was attractive, I could do more with my life. And I believe that was the first time I'd gotten uh, those words of encouragement. After this medical doctor told me that I was uh, intelligent, attractive, I could do more with my life, I remembered that as a child, when I was in school, that I did well and I got my high school equivalency. I went to a community college and got the first of five degrees. And um, I have a degree in business, one in criminal justice, two in political science, and one in law. And I became a university professor because people came into my life and they steered me. And the people who became my mentors did not look like me, but they encouraged me. And I never felt that because I was black, a female, doing parts of that time I was a single mother that I couldn't do. I always believed in America. I believed in the American dream. And consequently, I think I was able to achieve things far more than anyone would have imagined. I've lived the American dream. I love America. I believe it's a land of tremendous opportunities. And it saddens me when I hear and see the messages that we send our young people today about our country, about opportunities. I know that these are false narratives, and I believe that it is crippling our young people. And when I have been disadvantaged, a lot of times it came from white liberals and blacks who attacked me because for some reason, they did not like my story. In fact, I've had people tell me, you don't need to tell people where you come from. You don't have to share that part of who you are. And to me, um, I'm not, I've never been ashamed of coming from the poverty. I think that social class discrimination is bigger, really, than racial discrimination. And I think a lot of the discrimination that I've received from elites is because of my background. I never saw myself as being handicapped because I was a woman, I'm black, I, I'm poor, and all of those things. And I had blinders on. I was just focused on getting through because I just wanted the job at the other end, getting through. And it was only when I got to graduate school did I get those messages of how oppressed I was. And at that point, it was too late because I had already done all the things that that theory said someone from my background couldn't do.